Brothers are usually protectors of their siblings. They might confront bullies to protect their fellow siblings. They also teach their siblings how to react when confronted with a stressful or scary situation. Brothers are the keepers of their siblings. Where he sees his sibling is interacting with the wrong crowd or engaging in harmful behaviors such as substance abuse, he can advise him to cease such behavior or notify their parents when it's beyond his power to correct his sibling. A brother teaches his siblings about life values. This is usually a responsibility of elder brothers. Parents usually indoctrinate family values into their elder sons and expect them to act as role models for their siblings. Brothers are also in charge of ensuring that their siblings follow the basic house rules, particularly in the absence of their parents. Siblings, especially brothers, are able to handle stressful circumstances arising in a family setting and assist their fellow siblings to handle the same. For example, during challenging family moments, such as a death in the family, divorce or separation, brothers can explain the problem to their siblings and help them cope with the stresses of the moment. Brothers also come through for their siblings as they grow up and need financial or emotional support, especially where the parents are absent. As a social assistant, all that was clear to Sarah. She worked in that field more than enough to understand how her brothers are so important in the family and that what she was trying to explain to her husband, Adam. At that time, Sarah and Adam only had one kid, Tom. He was everything in their lives, and they would do whatever they could to make his life better. Sarah was always talking with Adam about the same subject. She didn't want Tom to grow up alone. Adam agreed with his wife. He also wanted another kid. But the problem was that he knew that Sarah didn't have other children. After giving birth to Tom, Sarah had a serious medical problem, and she went to the hospital for a couple weeks. The doctors told the family that they needed to run some medical examinations to locate the problem, and soon they told them that Sarah had a uterine tumor. The doctors had to remove Sarah's uterus to save her life, and since that day, she wasn't able to have kids. Sarah had a solution to this problem, but Adam didn't agree with her on that solution. Sarah wanted to adopt an unlucky kid. She wanted to save someone from a poor country and give him the opportunity to change his future. From his end, Adam wasn't convinced of Sarah's point of view. Adam always thought that his son should share the same blood with him and that what makes the family stronger Sarah understood her husband's situation, but she couldn't give up. She continued trying to convince him with her idea. Sarah changed her strategy with Adam. So instead of convincing him by talking about how much it's important to have brothers, she was explaining for him how miserable it is in the life of some places in Africa, especially for a young kid. Sarah was asking Adam to imagine if Tom was living in one of those poor societies where he wouldn't be able to go to school or have access to fresh water, and above all, the lack of medical care. Sarah told Adam that if he knew that Tom was living in these circumstances, he wouldn't do anything to help him. Sarah didn't only talk to Adam, she also showed him pictures and videos that broke his heart. After a lot of thinking, Adam agreed on adopting an African kid. He really wanted to save someone. Sarah was very happy when she learned that from her husband. She ran to tell her son Tom that finally he's about to have a brother. Sarah called one of her friends who was working in an organization specialized in helping children in the poorest countries of Africa. One of the main things this organization was doing, helping African kids and finding families in the USA, and that's exactly why Sarah called her. Sarah's friend sent her the application to Phil and told her that she would communicate with her to update her with all the details. After a few months of waiting, Sarah received the call that she'd been waiting for. Sarah was informed that finally her son was about to arrive in the USA. The family was very excited for the new arrival. They prepared his room and they bought him new clothes. When Jack arrived for the first time at home, it was a very happy day for him and the family. Jack was very happy to find himself in this nice house with those nice people who cared for him a lot, and the family was happy having a brother for their kid. Tom was also happy. He welcomed him and started to teach him everything he knows, especially the games and the video games, so they can play together. The boys became very close friends. Jack and Tom grew up together. They loved each other, and the parents were very satisfied for that. Sarah's plan was working perfectly, and Adam, who once didn't agree on this idea, was very thankful for his wife for the idea. Jack was very thankful for his family. He knew that they saved him from his miserable life, and that's why he was doing exactly what he's been asked to do. That's made him a very good boy to the family. At school, Jack was doing very well. He was in the top of his class almost every year. Actually, Jack ended up helping Tom in school. 
Sarah and Adam noticed that Jack is very smart and helpful, so they started to depend on him to do more things. When the boys became teens, especially in high school, the difference between them became very clear. Jack represented the good boy who always helped his family, and Tom, on the other hand, was the troublemaker. Jack spent his time studying, reading, or researching. At this point, he was only thinking about getting accepted in a good college because he considered that success as the only way to thank his parents for the quality of life that they provided for him. Also, Jack was motivated to be a doctor. He wanted to help other people because he knew perfectly the value of helping other people. On the other hand, Tom was spending his time partying, drinking, and sometimes using drugs. The family wasn't worried about Tom because he was the best basketball player in his school, and they thought that that was enough to get him to college. Tom was always angry. He was always fighting with his parents or with his brother, who wasn't close to him anymore. Tom was thinking that Jack took his place in the house, and from his end, Jack was thinking that Tom wasn't thankful enough for their parents. One day, everything changed in the quiet house forever. It was an ordinary day. Adam took his sons to school on his way to work, as he was doing every day. Adam dropped his sons off and gave them money to take a taxi home because he had to work and he wouldn't be able to pick them up after school. Adam was working when he received a call from school and been asked to come to school for an emergency. Adam ran to the school. He was afraid because they didn't tell him what exactly happened, they just asked him to come. When Adam arrived at the school, he realized that the problem was related to a trouble that Tom had done in the school because he was standing in the office, but yet he didn't know if he was in a fight or disrespected one of his teachers, but the problem was much bigger. The administration of the school informed Adam that they decided to suspend Tom and kick him out of the basketball team because they found drugs in his locker. Adam couldn't believe what he just heard. He never imagined that Tom would do that. On the way home, it was a sad day. Adam was screaming all around and Sarah couldn't stop crying. Tom took the fight to another level when he blamed his brother for what he had done. Tom said that he took his place at home and he didn't feel loved after he showed up in their life. Tom told his family that he went with drugs because of Jack. That wasn't enough for Tom. He asked Jack to leave the house if he wanted the house to be quiet again. Jack was shocked by what he heard and he ran out of the house. Adam got very angry with Tom after what he said to his brother, so he kicked him out of the house. In the next day, Sarah called her children to bring them back home to talk about last night, but nobody wanted to talk about what happened. Jack had a few words to the family, and he told them that he was very thankful for what they did for him. Jack told the family that he loved them, and he didn't want to be reason for any suffering for this family, and that's why he's decided to leave. Jack said that he would leave for college anyway in a few months, and he'll communicate with them, but he wouldn't return to his home. The family was very sad when Jack left for college, especially that they loved him so much. Jack went to the college when he started his long way to become a doctor, and Tom, who didn't have any chance to go to college or even finish high school, started to work with his father. And with the time, he became the responsible of his father's business. After a few years, when Adam died, Tom had all control over the business, and he was doing well. On the other hand, Jack became a successful doctor. One day, Sarah got very sick, and she needed to be transferred to the hospital. She was an old lady of 71 years at this time. In the hospital, the doctors told Tom and Sarah that she needed a surgery that wasn't included in her medical insurance. The surgery cost a lot of money, and she wouldn't live without it. Tom took his mother back home and told her that he wouldn't be able to pay all that money unless he sold the store, and he could never do that. Jack, who was working in the same hospital, was shocked when he found his mother's name in the files. He called the responsible doctor and asked him for the details. The doctor told Jack everything, and he told him that the family left the hospital because they didn't have enough money to pay for the surgery. Sarah was sitting at home alone, thinking about her medical condition that she didn't have a solution for, when the doorbell rang. When she opened the door, she got surprised to see Jack after all those years again. Jack told his mother that he knew everything about her medical condition and that he would help her. Jack took his mother back to the hospital and paid for the surgery. After having surgery, Jack asked his mother to move to live with him after Tom got married and left the house. Sarah and Jack still live together now, and from his point of view, Jack was still trying to repay the favors of his mother.